So I saw this post from Fodder Boy on the Poppyus forums, and it's basically saying that the game's been sold, and this is the first letter from the new owners, which is going to be Vision Online Games. So it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, you're looking at something that's they're going to be brand new. It's a new people, new face, new look at the game. Uh, you kind of hope that maybe they're going to have some sort of new uh, outlook on the game or some new ideas, right? So I was reading this, and it, it's pretty exciting. Um, well, it was exciting until I, uh, I recognized something, but we'll go through it here pretty slowly. So first up is some modernization stuff where they've basically just, you know, they've fixed up the servers and they're keeping them running, and that's all good and great. Um, then comes the idea of a legacy server. Now, this is one of the biggest issues with uh, what people have wanted for a long time, and they want to roll back, and they want to, you know, go back to how it was, and there's some rose-tinted glasses around that. Um, but it's one of those changes that, you know, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's not. So in their post here, uh, the new owners are basically saying that they would like to uh, go back to the early post-Sony days, so the early Portalus Games days. Um, it's a bit of an odd thing to sort of say and an odd place to choose to go back to. And if you read this, uh, it's even odder that um, this was recommended by Portalus. So it wasn't recommended by them. It wasn't their decision. This was something recommended by Portalus. Now, if you know Portalus, they're the ones who made all the changes uh, after the Sony transition. So it's a bit of a weird thing that they sort of recognize and are sort of saying hey, we may have made some bad decisions here. Um, we know there's a lot of people who want to go back. Um, he's sort of saying here that um, if you want to go back to the Sony era to enjoy that play style, uh, it, it wasn't really a different play style. It was the same game. The game has not been changed very much. Um, the only difference is some balance stuff and some big economy changes. Um, but the base game, like it's not like you're going back to you know, a different expansion in the game or something like that. And this brings up another point where people think that a legacy server is going to basically just fix everything. Um, people forget that the game was dying back then. You know, back in 2012, 2013, 2014, uh, even as far back as 2010, the game was declining very quickly. 2009, it was declining very quickly. Now, if you think that going back to the timeline where... SOE was basically giving up the game, um, you have to ask, well, why were they giving up the game? Well, it wasn't making any money or it wasn't making enough money to, you know, have a team and all this. So you kind of have to think it's great to go back. I, I wouldn't be against it. I don't like the changes that have been made to the game, um, but it's not going to be a, a band-aid for everything. It might bring back a few people. People are going to come check it out. You know, hey, it's back in the old game, um, but it doesn't fix new player issues. It doesn't fix long-standing issues, and it's not going to be some magical fix. Um, but it's maybe a good start. But the other thing is that you're splitting the player base. So they're basically saying here, you know, you can play on either the legacy server, or you can go play on the the server that's currently running, that's going to keep running. Um, you're You're basically splitting the population right then and there, which is an awful idea. No matter how much population you have, you should never split it. You should take the game into one direction. It should be either the legacy version of the game, or it should be the current version uh, with some fixes applied. Let's not split people up when this game has always been, and I can't stress this enough, it's always been a small population game. It's a niche game. It's a pirate game, and it's an old game. So you're not going to have some massive population of 13,000 players uh, where you can split them up into different servers and everything like that. Now, one place where you should split the players is region-based uh, because, and we'll talk about this later, uh, split port battles and port battle windows that don't suit a lot of players for that region uh, is one of the big things that will drive people away. But we'll discuss that in a second. So he says, you know, we decided to make a legacy server, then he's kind of tempering our expectations and saying, hey, it's going to take a long time. Uh, it might be a while, which is fine. You know, we don't want it anyway right now because the population is way too small. Um, so then he gives us his six step, or I guess it's six steps, but it's really not uh, his six step plan. So step one, advertise the game. 
okay, my reaction was okay. <laughs> uh, the next one is increase the number of daily players. Now, I'm not sure how this differs from step one, um, because to increase the daily players, you need to get more players, which means advertising. Um, so a bit, bit of an odd step. But um, number three, add more staff. Okay, I mean, can't complain about more GMs or whatever. Uh, I don't think they'll be doing actual game dev, um, just because the history of this game, if you don't know what's happened to the game and the issues with the code and the servers and some of the other stuff, um, you go watch another video basically on it. But uh, yeah, I don't think they'll be doing any actual game dev stuff, but who knows, maybe they've figured out a way. Uh, number four, overhaul and stabilize the current game. Um, I mean, it's fine. Stabilize it, sure. Overhaul, I don't know what they mean. Uh, I'm assuming they mean overhaul sort of how it runs, uh, just because I don't see them overhauling the game before they launch a legacy server, because that doesn't make sense. Um, but it would be great to know what that means, rather than just putting four words down saying overhaul and stabilize. Because that's, you know, what does that mean? You can interpret that a lot of different ways. Um, step five, prepare and launch the legacy server. We talked about that. And then step six, visually improve the game over time, which by all means, go ahead, knock your knock yourself out, fix the game, make it look pretty. Maybe you get some more people. doesn't really matter either way. So fodder boy aside, um, the other thing is sort of what I would focus on if I had to, if I was them and I got this game and I was like, yeah, what can I focus on first? Um, it wouldn't be advertising first. <laughs> so basically my first step would be taking feedback from the right people this time. So I would say reach out to the players that are left in this game and that show interest in this game still that are veteran players who are interested primarily in PvP and RVR. Now I say that because there's no point at this stage in the game listening to PvE players because ask yourself, Daryl and Brian, uh, are you going to implement new PvE content? If the answer is no, which I know it is, um, there's no point in even listening to those people. They're going to sit in fleet, and they're going to go and do missions, no matter what you do to the balance. Don't listen to them. They're not the ones you want to uh, take feedback from. You want feedback from the people who are going to be at every port battle, who are going to create content for the game, and are going to make people become addicted to the game again. So, with that said... Don't take it from people who are fair weathers, who are going to just disappear after a couple fights. Um, and don't take it from people who are just interested in buffing and driving their own agenda. You want the agenda that's best for the game. You don't want the agenda that suits one person best. And there are people in this game who will argue for balance changes and stuff that have no basis in fact, and it's all about them. So don't go near them. Now, the second thing before you advertise, please, for the love of God, um, fix what you can with the game. So there's a couple things here. One is area chat. Bring back area chat. Because removing area chat was one of the dumbest mistakes I've ever seen in this game. Just bluntly, dumbest mistake. Area chat, yes, it was a little bit toxic at times, but this is the age of Fortnite where you can log into Fortnite or Apex Legends and you can get screamed at by some 13 year old who's telling you to go get cancer and die. Now, area chat wasn't that bad, so bring it back. And uh, it was a great tool to make content because if I have five guys and I'm sitting at Port Royal, I can say, hey, anybody want a 6v6? And someone can say, yep, or someone can say, nope, uh, there's nobody on. I don't have to go and sit outside of Port for three hours to wait. It was great. I don't know why you got rid of it, um, but it was one of the dumbest things you ever did because it was the only way to communicate with other nations easily unless you had, you know, you knew the person. Um, but it was just a great tool to just organize stuff and people make it look like the game's alive. You know, look, there's these pirates talking. There's Spanish guys talking. There's people in the game. Like, why would you ever get rid of that? So the next thing is getting rid of 10 versus 10. So this is another idea that was like just a, an awful idea. And we told people it was an awful idea. And we said, hey, fodder boy, uh, this change is bad. It doesn't do anything for the game. Can you get rid of it, please? Don't do it. And he just did it. Now, I don't know why, because 
in practice, all it does, sure, there are some times you get a 10v10, it's very fun. But more often than not, uh, all you do with this, this mechanic is favor the people who have more people. So your whoever has 10 people uh, tends to have a big advantage, obviously. The other side of this is that the game doesn't have 10-person groups. Uh, so you can't guarantee that all 10 of your people get into the same battle because you can't give them auto-join. So it's very easy to split these 10 groups into different groups and get ganked, and people get frustrated and people quit. Now, the like, whoever decides to do this, I mean, it's a great idea to do 10 versus 10, but you have to have the infrastructure to support it. You need to have 10-man groups. You need to have mechanics that allow 10 people to join a battle at the same time. Because if you allow splitting and stuff like that, every time a split happens, people would get frustrated. And then eventually, people would say, I'm not going to that port because there's going to be 12 people from the other nation, and we only have 6 people. Now, sometimes you have a lot of veteran players, and it's like, hey, we can handle a 6 versus 10, or we can try it. Um, other times it's like, hey, we have a bunch of new people and a six versus ten is pointless because we're just going to die, we're going to lose, we're going to lose our boats, we're going to lose our money, and then people who don't have a lot of gold uh, or people who just get frustrated quit. So again, maybe you can justify why this isn't the game, uh, but <laughs> there's like no practical reason to have it, and it's really just a, a terrible mechanic. And it's another thing that people have said, remove this, please, and fodder boy, just nothing. Just, hey, I'm going to keep it because maybe he likes 10v10s. I don't know. I don't know who he is, but um, yeah, maybe he loves them. The next change is balancing ships. So balancing ships has a couple sort of lines to it. Um, one part is balancing the cost because as a new player, looking and having to buy a, I don't even know what they go for anymore, um, but there's a lot of zeros behind the most powerful ships these days. Um, when you level, and if you most new people will probably be leveling by quests or fleeting, uh, you don't make enough to buy those ships anymore. Now, I know the reason they're in the game is to make money, which is you have to make money. I don't disagree. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to make free ships or free to acquire ships. And I mean the recipes. Uh, obsolete. So back in the day, you used to be able to, you know, compete with a Cap MC, a Tig MC, um, a Myrmidon MC, a Hercules, Hercules Sleek, Hercules Mastercraft, uh, all of the, I guess you call it profession, uh, specific special boats, the Achilles, uh, the Cursed Blade, you know, all these other boats that there was a number of boats you could compete in. Uh, there's a number of fourth rates you could compete in. There is a number of uh, smaller boats you could compete in. Now, uh, you've sort of <laughs> marginalized the the uh, structure a little bit. And it's um, basically if you want to be in the best boat possible for a f an open sea fight, uh, you're in a Concorde or an Adventure. And they're expensive. Um so one side is balancing sort of the cost of boats so that people can PvP and learn because one of your things here is a marketing push, right? You want to get new players, and they're going to be bad, and they need to learn. Um, and they're going to sink a lot. So making it cheap and affordable for them and they so don't quit and say, hey, I have to go out and fleet for 30 hours now to buy another boat, bad idea. Don't advertise first again, right? So... <laughs> um, that's the big thing. The other thing is balancing the stats. Um, there are certain ships that are very strong. Uh, there are certain ships that are very weak, considering the cost. Um, there needs to be some tweaking done there, and there needs to be some tweaking done on just combat in general. Repair speed, uh, consumables, um, skills even. There are some skills out there that need to be tweaked um, that haven't been tweaked since 2009 that are still broken. So, yeah. There's a lot of things you can change in the game, balance-wise, because that'll make people happier. Now, the other thing in the game that you need to fix before you advertise is the new player experience. Now, if you have leveled a character in this game, you know it's not very straightforward. If you've played any other game, modern game, uh, you know that tutorials have come a long way, and sort of holding your hand has come a long way. Now, if you're bringing back veteran players, you don't need this, but if you want to bring in new players, 
uh, the tutorial system in this game and the opening quests and the just general how do I get to level 50 is very bad. Uh, it's very convoluted and you're not going to be able to change it because you're not going to write new quests, you're not going to script new quests, there's no way. Um, but what you can do is do some sort of push to put veteran guilds in contact with new players. Um, I don't know how you do that per se, uh, but there are a couple options from other games. One is sort of a, a mentoring system where you sort of link up new players with old guilds. Uh, another is sort of a, uh, a system where you can sort of direct and work with new guilds to promote them and say, hey, join a guild, you know, make sure that new players understand that they need to join a guild and ask questions and have someone to, to hold their hand through the process. Um, so there's a lot of ways to do it. That's for you to decide. You bought the game, um, but please work on the new player experience. Otherwise, you're not going to retain nearly as many people as you could. And it's going to be sad. So then, once all those things are complete, I would advertise. <laughs> And um, when you advertise, keep in mind that it's 2019. And this game was in production in like 2006. Uh, it's old. It's ugly. It's not great. Uh, but there are niches you can advertise to. Um, naval games, huge. Pirate games, huge. Uh, a lot of people came to this game from Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, from that whole push. Um you know, it, it's going to be tough now to sell this game to the next generation. Um, so I wouldn't even go there. But you should be targeting older people, uh, people who may have played this game in the past, way back when, uh, and people who didn't hear about it and that would have played it. So, you know, there's a lot of naval games out there, and that's the community you want. Uh, you don't want to waste your time marketing to Fortnite people because they're not going to like this game. It's too slow. Uh, it doesn't have all the fancy whistles, uh, and it's ugly. Um, so basically, when you advertise, just be smart about it. Uh, stabilize. So when I'm saying stabilize, I mean you want to build a stable community. Uh, you want to build a community that enjoys the game. Uh, so one of the biggest issues in this game's past has been cross-teaming. And not, not, it's not always a bad thing. Um, but it can be. Part of cross-teaming that comes into this is port battle windows. There's a lot of issues around that. Um, if you're going to build a stable game, it needs to be stable around RVR because RVR is the one thing in this game that drives everything. It drives PvP, it drives uh, the economy, and it's the one thing that it's the end game. Uh, people stick around for it. People stick around to win maps and to have the ego. So you need to stabilize it. Now, one of the biggest things that drives people away, and this is all anecdotal, is the idea of day flipping or night flipping. Um, so this is when people would flip ports, which is make unrest. I don't know, Daryl, if you've ever played this game, but make unrest, uh, create a port battle on a port, and it falls during a time when the majority of the people on the server are not online. Now, back in the day, you had European and North American servers, and that you think you still do. I don't really know because there's a lot of Europeans on Antigua now. Um, but Antigua was the um, was the NA server for a while, and Roberts was EU, and before that there was other servers that had been closed. Um, but basically, it was nice. And what happens now, and what happened back then as well, but it was less of an issue because you had way more players. Um, but one nation will be stronger at one time zone. And so you will be, say, you know, working a regular job and you get off work and it's like, man, there's nothing going on. But there was great port battles during the day that you weren't at. Um, or maybe they weren't great. Maybe it was just a slaughter. Uh, but basically you can lose the map uh, just because you're not around at the right times. And the other side has lots of people. And there's nothing more depressing than watching you lose the map because you're losing every daytime port battle, and that's the only thing the enemy is doing, is daytime port battles. Um, so if you want to keep people interested, it needs to be competitive, and it needs to be structured for the server. If they want to fight in that window, they need to go to the server that has that port battle window. If they want to fight during primetime North America, they need to go to the primetime North America server, and that needs to be the only port battle window there is. 
Um, otherwise, you're going to have the same old issue where it's day flips, night flips. People get bored. People say, well, they're not fighting us because it's a day flip. Uh, let's just take the map off, disappear for three months, come back. Okay, oh, it might be fun for two battles. Oh, they're doing it again. Run away. Um, so fix that and stabilize RVR because that's the core you need and those are the people you want to retain. And then last on my list is visual improvements because um, people aren't playing this game for the graphics and people don't play games for graphics. Graphics are nice, um, but at the end of the day, mechanics make a game. The game can be ugly as anything, but if it's fun, people will play it. Um, if you want to do improvements to it, by all means do. Um, but please don't mess with the code of the game to do it. Please don't break it. Um, it's not worth it to have some fancy graphics. Uh, if you're just sort of turning resources away from the other things I've mentioned, um, and the other things that you've mentioned in your posts, uh, that need attention first. Um, so if you want to do it, do it last or have someone do it on the side. Um, but please don't uh, don't make it a priority because people won't play this game for the graphics no matter what you do. It's an old game. It'll always be an old game. And uh, you can maybe pretty it up a little bit, um, but people will stay for the RVR, for the stability, for the PvP. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I'm going to jump to one other thing that I spotted in here first. So if you keep going down, it makes mention of, uh, you know, their art team, kind of cool, some other stuff, you know, player satisfaction. They want to make it so you can toggle the graphics if your computer sucks or whatever. Great. Uh, then they talk about staffing. Now, they're saying that the player population is steadily growing in the wake of the transition to vision. Now, <laughs> I don't know what you classify as steadily growing, um, but having like 10 people come back to the game to check it out because they heard someone bought it and, hey, maybe that game's still good and I used to play it. I don't know if that's population growth. I mean, it's kind of an, it's kind of an odd argument there. Um, but he says customer support requests have been increasing. Okay, well, I mean, I don't know what people are still requesting. Maybe do something with your game, but um, besides from that, okay, fair, you want more people. Um, so you're going to hire someone. Awesome. And I'm like, man, you're hiring someone from Flying Lab Software. Great. And he's going to be a GM. And he's going to transition into the head of live operations. And I'm thinking to myself, have they brought back somebody from the old days? Is this Misha coming back? Is this, you know, someone else? It's, and then I'm like, I recognize that name. Brian Tanny. I'm like, I recognize that, but who was that? Um, and he's transitioning from Portalist Division. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, it's Fodder Boy. And he's coming into the new company and he's going to be the head of live operations. Now, this is like one of those things where you're just like, you, you think a new company is going to make some steps and improve the game. And what do they do? They turn around and hire the one person who was probably most responsible uh, for causing this game to drop off faster than it needed to be. Now, granted, and all credit to him, he's kept the game running uh, for many years now uh, with li very little resources. And he's like, you know, thank, thank him for keeping it going. Um, but he also made some changes that were insane. Literally like insane changes to a game that should never have been made. So I want to read something here, and this is a translation of a post that Fodderboy posted back in 2011 when he had just taken over as producer of the game. Uh, he was moving in from a customer support manager role, I think it was, um, and he, I don't think he had been with the company that long, but what happened was the old producer or sort of, you know, top person uh, was moving to another uh project at the company and uh fodder boy came in as the new producer so he wrote this post and this has been translated uh from what was a french translation of it because it's hard to find these things anymore on the internet so the grammar might be a little bit off so i'm not going to quote him on it but you can kind of get the gist of what he's saying here now before i read this if you're an old player and you know what happened to the balance in the game and the economy in the game in the last well since 2012 basically um, or late 2012, 
um, you can attest to how outrageous this sounds when you read this. Now, here's what Fodder Boy wrote. So he's talking about um, what he wants to do with the game and the direction of the game, right? Not, not unusual. So he mentions that one thing that's uh, brought up a lot to customer support for the game in 2011 is balance, right? Now, he says this, and this is reading again a translation, so it's a little bit off, but it's pretty close. Quote, uh, there is a lot of balance in Pop BS. Often when it is done, it is motivated by comparisons between ships, between one combat school versus another, or between pirates and nations. The concept of equilibrium is really a lot. A lot that each of these comparisons and that it is all of these components that must be taken into account. So, breaking here, um, there is translation issues there, but basically what he's saying is that the idea is equilibrium. And you have to factor in everything, ships, players, equipment, nations, uh, you know, professional careers, whatever, pirate, privateer, free trader, etc. Um, so then he says, balance is the economy, the ships, the equipment, the skills, the combat of the character, the consumables, and the rewards, because they all have an importance in the overall scheme of RVR. Realm versus realm, you know, that's trademark, by the way, but good effort, um, Everything must be taken into account, and this is the approach that we will adopt by taking up the challenge of improving balance in the game. So again, break here. Uh, he's basically saying that they want to improve balance. Nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, in the past, he says, the adjustments made on one aspect of the game without taking into account the uh, impacts on the other aspects of the game has mostly just moved the problem around, which is why we only made small targeted fixes. Now, if you, if you know what happened in 2012 and with 2.11 and with a lot of other changes, um, you'll know that Fodder Boy doesn't really understand the concept of balance because what he said there is uh, a bit of an odd thing because he's saying, uh, you know, we, we have to look at the whole thing um, rather than looking at compartmentalized issues. Now, if you look at a game like League of Legends... Uh, one of the biggest things they do there is they do sort of sweeping changes and then they hone in on problems. So they'll change the entire item sets for characters. They'll change the map. They'll change the way the game works. And certain characters, because of that, will become broken or very overpowered or very weak. Um, and they'll make targeted changes to buff those characters. And the overall function of that is you basically have a game where every character is somewhat viable and every play style is somewhat viable. You can be big damage, you can be a tank. It's all, you know, viable. Now, if you know what happened when Fodder Boy made changes to Pop VS, you'll know that he made uh, very few ships viable. He removed a lot of old ships in the game that uh, were once viable. You could see in any 6v6 or any fight, multiple different ships, and they were all viable. Now it's Adventures, Concords, uh, a couple fourth rates, you know, some third rates. Uh, a lot of the ships you'll notice, they're not balanced around um, just being, you know, equal in some way or having different play styles or different strengths. Uh, often the best ships are the ones that cost real money to build or certify. Um, so it's sort of balanced around the idea that uh, the more you pay, the better it is. And um, if you want a cheap boat, well, you're going to be suffering. And if you want to play different play styles, well, too bad, because there's one boat that's the better than the rest. Now, it's not that the, you know, other game, the other game, the old game didn't have this problem. Um, there were certain ships, the Hercules Mastercraft, uh, was pretty strong. The difference was it was limited to one class, and that class could not play mostly in fourth rates or third rates. Um, he took that away, and he said... Take your class skills, which are balanced and have been balanced for a number of years uh, on a certain play style and a certain type of ship, and now apply that to everything. So you want to be a privateer and a fourth rate, go for it. If you want to be a naval officer and have an amazing skill set um, and supposed to be slow and jump in a Concord and be extremely powerful, go for it. Um, so the balance concept for Fodder Boy hasn't been great. Um, a lot of people have complained about it, and the fact that he's going back to another role now where he's going to be able to 
design balance uh, is pretty scary. The other thing is the economy. Now, Pop BS, when it launched, was kind of heralded by critics as a pretty good MMO. Uh, it was a niche game, not advertised much, and uh, not very popular, but it was, you know, critics gave it a good review. And one of the things they praised was the economy system. Now, if you've been in the game for a while, you know, the economy used to be pretty, uh, pretty good. It used to be that you could level up, have enough money to buy a couple ships. Um, there was cheap options out there. You could buy a Cap MC for 30,000. Uh, fittings were very cheap. Um, but there was ships that were more expensive, obviously. Um, ships that took a lot of items, first rates, all of that. And, you know, when you lost a ship, you lost a lot of resources. And it was tough to get back sometimes. Um, but that system lasted for many years. Now, there was some duping and there were some other issues that, you know, kind of plagued the system. And should, could it have been revamped to accommodate a smaller player base? Yes, of course. Um, but Fodder Boy's changes to the economy, a guy coming from customer, su customer support and now being a game producer, was to basically create massive inflation, um, center the economy around a few objects and items that are only built to build the most powerful ships, um, because you don't need to build the shitty ships, obviously. Um, so uh, just his track record is awful, and the fact that he's now been brought in as the, you know, head of live operations again, it's like, ooh, you know, maybe maybe this company isn't so great. Because I don't know if this new company's owner has ever played the game. Um, I'm assuming he hasn't, just because I think that's one of the first things you'd mention, that, hey, I used to play this game, I really love it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of scary when you bring in this guy who's notoriously disliked by the community. Um, another thing issue with Fodder Boy is that he is just been unreceptive to feedback you know we used to give him feedback when he first took over you know hey don't do this hey do that hey don't implement 2.11 it's going to be bad for the game um, and this was unanimous feedback from most people who were very active at the time from both europe and north america um, you had players who were you know in every port battle and at every fight and always in the red zones um, but he kept calling us the vocal minority and said hey guys there's this big vocal or silent majority out there who wants these changes um i don't know how he knew they wanted the changes because they're silent but you know he went with what he did and made 2.11 and changed all the accuracy changed the economy um and the game was i think worse off because a lot of people quit just because of that um a lot of people lost sort of interest in trying to help this new company that had bought the game um, and now we're going down that same road again where the same guy is going to be kind of driving the boat so to speak um, and we'll just be yelling at the the wall again because fodder boy does not communicate he doesn't give good feedback um, he doesn't listen to feedback and he doesn't uh, involve the community very much sadly you know, he's brought on some, some people to be forum moderators, and it's very questionable about who these people are and how they act in the game, how they act in the forums. Um, I don't know. I hope to God he doesn't listen to them about balance and stuff, but also there hasn't been balance in this game. Uh, there hasn't been a, a content patch with actual numbers and changes for so long, and it would be so easy to go in there and say, hey, the Concord is a little bit strong. Let's just nerf it hey, the, uh, these boats are a bit too whatever, let's change it. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be changed in the game uh, and tweaked, but he just hasn't done it. And so, you know, it's just, it's an awful thing to see that they're bringing him back and he's going to be in a lead role and he's got a little bit more money, I guess, behind him now and a team of visual improvements. But yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. And the last thing is sort of these these last two paragraphs where he mentions uh, advertising the game through players and promotional campaigns and stuff like that. And, you know, if you want to bring back ardent fans, then you need to make changes. Advertising the game as it is, or the game with a split 
you know, legacy server and current server and stuff like that. It's all bullshit. And your people who have played this game for a long time, who know the history of the game, can see right through you and can see right through everything that has been done since 2012. It's all just been a, a joke and a screen and, hey, guys, we got hacked for four months or whatever it was. Okay, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but that's odd, isn't it? Um, you know, it's one of these things where it's like this game has so much history behind it, but it's been a niche game forever. It's not a big game. And don't don't think that you're going to turn it into a big game because you're going to be disappointed. Um, it's a fun game, uh, but it wasn't big in the old days, and it won't be big now. Um, so just temper your expectations and, you know, realize that the fans you have already are the ones that you want to keep and listen to and the ones that you can bring back from the old days who played every day until, you know, some of the changes drove them away. If you can bring them back, you need to listen to them and hold on to them uh, because they'll be the ones that keep this game fun. You don't want to listen to the people who will be gone in six months, the people who uh, have motives that aren't for the best of the game. Um, you know, if you're going to take content from people... Uh, just make sure that they're in it for the long haul. Don't pay YouTubers to make videos and uh, do shit like that because they're not going to stick around with the game. And as soon as they move on, their community moves on. And I've seen too many games uh, listen to these people and take feedback from them uh, because they're popular on YouTube or something like that. Um, and then they just leave the game. And the changes are always for the worst. Always. Don't be like Naval Action. Don't do it. And you might survive.